Welcome to the Golden Feather. Grab a pint, a plate, and take your seats. Your hosts Vertec and Chibi Bree are back from their latest adventures. Hey guys, how are you doing today? Welcome back to another episode with the Golden Feather. Um, today we are biting time. <laughs> Um, we are literally waiting on some more info and with the, uh, new creative director's letter right around the corner. Hey, I actually said that correctly this time uh, <laughs> with the new cre creative director's letter right around the corner. I'm expecting to hear some really juicy stuff. I, they said there'd be dates, but not necessarily all the dates that we'd want, but dates definitely. Hi, hi. Welcome guys so much to the chat. If you're joining us live on Twitch. Um, we're happy to have you guys back. Welcome back, Z. Welcome back, Shays. Congratulations on, um, by the way, Shays. You guys have an amazing community thread that I love to go to for just resources in general. And um, if you guys ever miss a live stream of Ashes of Creation, you can catch all the transcripts that Shays does. And I think Ashes even like mentioned it somewhere before. So I thought that was really cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, check that out all the data you need to know and um the other community person that was uh featured by ashes recently was uh the oh man i forgot what uh, let me go grab it uh, anyway here's vertex <laughs> <laughs> hey guys uh as you said welcome back welcome back but yeah lex with the uh, yes, the wiki with the wiki but i want to grab the link to the wiki 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 wow. i almost called him zex i don't know why Zex? Z E X. Z E X. Trying to make it borderline lewd in here. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Um, But yeah, I actually follow both CM Shays and Lex's um, info just whenever I want well rounded info on stuff that's been released. That being said, happy belated 4th of July from here in the US. Um, we were not here last week because we were doing every other week, but there was this awesome uh, 4th of July fireworks show that they gave us in the uh, news section <laughs> on PI, or not, not PI, on, um, on Instagram. That's where I saw it. Um, yeah, I was working. I was working. Yeah. And by fun, I mean torture. I was doing um, not work, but I was working on stuff. And our neighbor invited me over, and I was like, yeah, as soon as this is done. Two hours goes by, I look down, I'm like, oh, hey, it's it's like 1 o'clock. They're probably not awake anymore. Yeah, totally not done. Totally still waiting till it's done. Basically never went. Yeah. But there are... Nifty new cosmetics, though, based around uh, what looks like a firework theme. That ship, I want the ship. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of, let me pull that up here real quick for you. Um, yeah. Uh-oh. That might get a little loud. Let uh, me go ahead let me, and yeah. shut some windows here. Okay, then I'll go over this. Yeah, sorry. One of our neighbors has this uh, put-together bike that has, like... It's motorized, but not like in a professionally done way. I think they did it themselves. It's really cool, but it's really loud. <laughs> um, it's also very hot today. Uh, it's like 80 something degrees in the house that uh, it's scuffled. <laughs> um, yeah. The ship looks interesting. The Coliseum looks it. I like the backpack. That's what I like is the backpack. What makes you like the ship, though? What makes me like the ship? The sails. They're like fairy wildfire. <laughs> Time to make a new clay model backpack. Yes, we want it. What did you think about Steven's explanation for the fireworks? Oh, man. Uh, fireworks. I actually, I'm, I'm sorry, but I completely missed it. <laughs> um, I will look into that right now, actually. Yeah, no gunpowder, he said. That's why the uh, the initial slip of there even being cannons on boats had to come around like it was more of a launcher than a cannon. Huh. Steven said we should never have gunpowder in AFC. Yeah, yeah. So how did the fireworks get there? I blame magic. 
try I to mean, find... Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, I guess it's a gap stop. It's a gap stop. It's not really technically gunpowder. It wasn't mined from the ground. It was created by fairy people. Blame Tolnar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I tried to buy the backpack, but the sale would not go through. Oh, no, yeah. I hear they have issues with the, um, with the shop sometimes. I'm not really sure. Yeah, I gotta put in a. T I still need to put in a ticket because I tried to make a purchase last last month with the uh, the Vex stuff and it didn't go through. It made me sad because by the oh. time I went to try like a third time, <laughs> yeah, Fat Dobby, Dobby that's <laughs> fantastic. By the way, he, we had one too many socks. One too many socks. Uh, he he need he needs fireworks now. Fireworks are how you free him. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's why that's why he's got all the fireworks. <laughs> Burn the socks away. <laughs> Let's see. Well, we can go really complicated. Um, yes, and we are. Try to grant you permission, or you could you, if you just send it to us. We'll post it in there for yeah, sure. Yeah, we prefer to post it just in case. Uh, but yeah, um, I am actually right now. It is set for subscribers to be able to post. Um, but yeah, the scaling for the arena does interest me. I want to know like. Is this like a small fighting ring or is this like massive? That's what I want to know. Subs only, wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go. Wink, boink. Subs only. You're going to do a subs only stream. Get ready for it, guys. Yeah, as soon as whatever. Like, okay. Real talk, real quick. Twitch has decided that something we've used has violated their terms. And I don't understand because Mac and Noji's lovely music is used in our our sound, and and so is uh, like we look for very non copyright stuff. And in fact, it was really weird. Somebody uh, said that the um, music that we used for the um, like another round from Mac and Noji um, was apparently marked as a what was it World of Warcraft. Hearthstone. Hearth it's apparently, Hearthstone. It apparently was like the Hearthstone theme song, which it's really not. It's just, totally not. <laughs> but yeah, they uh, when they first sent it, when Twitch first sent out the emails about you know now our partners and affiliates can send out. Oh yeah, by the way, I just booked the bottom. Um, uh, bot spam. Yeah, right. But uh, now partners and affiliates can can do like subs only streams and such like that. But they in initially sent us an email that said that we since we'd had a violation in the past ninety days, we're not allowed to. But then the very next day, they sent another email and said, uh, yeah, we messed up. And it was just supposed to say, if you have, rather than you have. Oh, because uh, I actually was looking at it and it said on the actual thing when I was looking at it, you do not qualify for this. Yeah, it's, it specifically told us we don't qualify because we've had a violation. But it was maybe it wasn't the next day. It was like a couple days later. Yeah. It was long enough that I had forgotten about the original email because whatever, who needs to, who needs to sub <laughs> And then we had that the the touch up come back through saying, um, that was our bad. We kind of fucked up. But yeah, still YouTube still flags it as being a Hearthstone song, and I don't understand why. Because it wouldn't let it wouldn't let Maggie re uh, repost our our video. Not at first, yeah. Violating uh, terms of service. YouTube has done that to me for actual actual music and had to go through an entire ordeal. Wow. Okay, that's crazy. Bananas. Bananas. I'm telling you, man. We need to just hop over to, like, Mines and, uh, what was it, DLive. Just get rid of this Twitch and YouTube junk. Uh, yeah, it's from Mac and Noju's channel. I can link that for you if you guys would like. I usually link it at the bottom of the, uh, YouTube stuff. Mixer. Yeah, maybe Mixer. Hey, Wayla. Welcome back. Hey, How are hello. you? Hype. Hype. <laughs> Oh man, I miss that guy. Um, so there isn't a lot of news, as you know. Um, we did get cos cosmetic info, um, but aside from that, there's not a whole lot of info. I know we're waiting on divine nodes. I know we're waiting on the creative director's letter. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot there. Um, and Vertek and I are also looking at freaking letter i know i know everybody is waiting on it <laughs> next episode brought to you by the letter d or the d letter the 
the director's letter? I'm done with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you want the D? Oh, jeez. The D. The D. <laughs> no, I want the L for letter. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... CD. Yeah, I mean, we could put it on a CD, I guess. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, yeah, that makes me sad. Makes me sad. There's really not much. We kept looking around like daily, like what is there? What is there? What is there? Ah, uh, Shays, that sounds awesome. Sorry, yeah. Blue screen, both of you playing up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now that they have that that squad streaming thing going, where you can actually get it all set up and and it's like officially multi streaming. Yeah. It's gonna be a thing. I'm excited. I think they are back hard at working, fixing things again. Yeah, see, um, that's what I was going to say. We were combing through the forums today because we also like to try to do occasionally like just a complete community day, especially when there's no news. Um, but also because we're here for you guys. We are about you guys. So going through the community, seeing the forums, seeing the post, seeing the topics that are being discussed, that's important to us. And um, one thing I was noticing was a lot of people are um, feeling like just a lull in, in any sort of information. Even though we're getting information each month, it overall seems to the original poster as if it's not any actual information. It's very light and very lackluster when we get it. And when, when we do get it, it's good information. Don't don't take me wrong it's good information it's just there's there's not much of it it's kind yeah. of trickling out at the moment but there was somebody else uh that that did make a good point in that same thread that basically said this is kind of like a lull before the storm like exactly. this is the calm we're experiencing right now we just got to make it through the calm because as soon as the um gates of info open the flood shall war sorry yeah, <laughs> exactly as soon as that castle siege starts and like the the actual fixes that they've programmed in are tested and they work out all right it's going to be just a straight train of info from that point forward just things coming out just continually mm -hmm. the back end was the big stop on everything but that being said for uh cm she's with your idea of us doing the split screen now what we got to do is since neither one of us are really great at pvp <laughs> we're gonna find a third person to be in a third window <laughs> And they're going to have that amazing, like, Spanish soccer announcer voice going, calling every one of our plays and everything we're doing to add more excitement to it. Yeah. That's what we got to do. Uh... <laughs> if you know somebody, let them know. We'll pick them up. And Chibi actually lives for the first time in all of the games for longer than five minutes. <laughs> 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 um... But yeah, so as far as our week, uh, Vertec and I are actually working, for a sec, we aren't being sarcastic because that actually sounds wonderful. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to I'm gonna get some, somebody to do it. <laughs> Even if they just have a really great announcer, like hype voice, and it's, they just talk gibberish about random things we're doing and about the texture of the leaves as we run past them. And just roasting us for being horrible at PvP. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, I want to <laughs> see you. That'd be fun. If, um, <laughs> I actually had uh, a couple friends that that's all they did. They actually had a, a series on Twitch years ago when Sotor was out. And it was, um, oh, what was it? Like, this is why scrubs don't random. And their their whole thing behind it was they would get on League of Legends. They would both random, but they were both terrible. And they would just call out every single terrible play they made as if it was the most wonderful thing in the world. Oh, it was hilarious to watch. Oh, yeah. yeah. In here. <laughs> I love the... I love the uh recommendations you guys are giving us she has the right amount of height right she also knows how to make something like really hilarious too we'll be playing in game and she'll just be like dude did you see that did you see that and i'm like what 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 i don't know i just jumped off of a rock i'm like what <laughs> 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 something like that you know but you're her funny. one of the one of the troll guys in so we can have a dual announcers going <laughs> they'll like go off of each yeah, other yeah. and we're over there like trying to like not die as we're cracking up laughing <laughs> 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 I'm in. I'm in. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Double down on that plan. Yeah. Uh, Shays was talking about Zara, uh, our guild leader. 
Um, but yeah, so Vertec and I are working really hard. Uh, both of us are learning a few new skills and hopefully we'll be able to have a new job in, by the end of the year, fingers crossed. Um, that will give us a lot more, um, a lot more time to not only be in the community with you guys, but also when Ashes does release more game to play, to actually be able to actually play the game for once because <laughs> this week I've been playing a lot of Final Fantasy 14 um I'm really enjoying coming back into it after like the couple of months we spent moving <laughs> um but currently I'm on the crystal server on uh Brynhildr if anybody wants to come join me randomly uh join us join, join us. us one of us one of us <laughs> Google um, gobble, Google gobble. <laughs> but that brings up another topic that Vertec actually found in the um, forums today. Um, talking about bosses with the last live stream we had. Somebody asked if bosses were going to be um, able to be killed multiple times or if they'd be a single kill and just not spawn again. And as the original poster mentioned, and I'm, I'm sure Vertec will throw the link up there in just a second. Um, as the original poster mentioned, um, Intrepid did a really good job of diplomatically sidestepping the conversation topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, they. I, I think they gave the the appropriate amount of feedback on it without giving away too much about uh, how the game is really going to function. Right. Before moving moving on with with that conversation, I do want to at least say like, yeah, we all. I saw that uh, you had posted about uh, the new CV getting that finally finished up. Uh, glad, oh, you, yeah. glad you had all ironed out. So, yeah. Good luck on applying for the new job. Fingers hope you get crossed. It. Get it. Fingers crossed in good in good luck, not in any other form that fingers crossed may mean. <laughs> what could it mean? I don't know. Apparently, the some of the things that we Americans do don't mean the same thing in other countries, so <laughs> I'd rather just say it means good luck to me, so I'm, I'm wishing you good luck. I got great oh, yeah. feedback on yeah. it, now I need to rewrite it again. Nice, nice, good job. Just whatever you do, if you're visiting over in, uh, say, the European <laughs> area, just don't accidentally flip your peace sign backwards. It means something totally different. Oh. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, so the yeah the the world bosses and rating and um, economy and such. Like, <laughs> <you know what's laughs> I'm like, I don't know, but I won't do it. Got it. <laughs> don't do it. Just don't do it. Yeah, there's a whole big story behind it, and I know it, but who in chat knows it? Especially if you're from the area, I hope you know it. The peace sign, yeah. Uh, Waylo says yes, it does. Peace. <laughs> like, peace, like peace, man, peace. Yeah. The peace sign. <laughs> uh, you can do the, the the potty dance. That's kind of like a pizza. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. But yeah, apparently it goes back to um, old wars and whatnot, where uh, they would capture archers, <laughs> and when they'd, before they'd release them, they'd actually like lop off a finger or two so they couldn't pull the bow back and let loose. So that was kind of like their way of saying, "Yeah, I got my fingers still. F you, buddy." Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> got it okay yeah um okay yeah so uh world bosses <laughs> the world bosses <laughs> so yeah um yeah the the thing with uh the the boss where from like the big events and it's spawning and would it be a single kill or would it be a repeatable kill and steven's response was basically saying that yeah don't do the visa <laughs> yeah not that one either yeah, but uh, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, See, Rilla has the actual either. names of the wars and everything, and who was in it. I just remembered there being the wars and archers and fingers getting chopped off. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 a good point to make. Like, if if you're gonna have choices be meaningful and impactful, and your choice your choices in a certain area brought an event around to accost your town or what have you. I was there, <laughs> <laughs> old wise one. Um, but you, sh you should definitely have, I would say, the prime pick of the litter or the limited edition items, like the, the limited drops and whatnot, because it was your area, your hometown. You got the notice because you lived in the area, and they're like, "Hey, your town's getting attacked right now. You might want to head down there." 
Yeah. So I can totally see that because it's it's everything that happened for that specific area. Um, I can see the benefit of having some world bosses that are not specifically event driven, like an event that happened because of the nodes leveling or what whatever choices you make on the node um, being a thing. But just if there's just a random world boss that happens because a certain number of metropolises get to a certain point and the entire world as a whole gets to a certain phase of, of technology advancement or something. Right. Like those should be just available for whatever. I yeah. thought somebody had an interesting take. I think it might have been OP that wrote it as well. Um, mm -hmm. But, sorry, I keep calling OP because I don't remember the name of the person that wrote it. I'll actually go ahead and pull that up now. Neuro guy. Neuro guy, okay. Um, and he mentioned that um, basically he thought that having a, uh, I think it was him, either that or it was uh, Democles, um, one of the first few posts, that's that's how far I got into it before I was like, oh, I, I like this topic, it's interesting. Um, but they were saying it would be interesting to have like smaller bosses that you can fight if you're not as hardcore and um, something that's more hardcore so that the hardcore players feel like they have something that's actually like being fought against instead of like, oh, it's it's an easy peasy squa uh, squash boss because we've been pushing our gear so hard and our stuff so hard that our, our tier of damage is a lot higher. Yeah. See, there's, I mean, there's, there's some good points all around mm -hmm. on different sides. Um, like, uh, how is it you pronounce it? Hold on. Democles? Democles? Hey, don't tease me, okay? Damocles, like Damocles says. I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a good economic reason, too, for it to not be like a constant steady stream of loot coming from like one mega badass boss that spawns out to try to attack your town. Yeah. Because it's consistently just dropping out a whole bunch of stuff that can be sold on the on the market or even broken down to sell on the market or broken down to repair such like that um that could that could totally just cause an economy to go out of whack with one specific instance one event triggers one monster to wander in and then it just gets farmed until they stop letting it spawn but i could see maybe a maybe a somewhat of a um what's the word i'm looking for like a balance they could go is compromise that's the word and one kind of compromise they could go would be if the really really rare really awesome stuff dropped maybe the first time or two and then it had like a sliding scale down to just common items just so people can say that they did the fight they killed it they they experienced the event but they didn't get like a really wicked awesome loot from Ooh, the first time. what if it went the other way what if it was easier and each time that you think you killed the boss like the boss like maybe runs away and hides but like and that signifies you as like you defeated it you've like you've moved the territory like it just drops loot or whatever um hmm. but then it comes back and when it comes back it has a lot of the same um what's the word i'm, I'm thinking of um like abilities but not abilities um, mechanics, a lot of the same mechanics, but a little harder. And then each time it has a slightly different, yeah, a slight stat difference, a slight mechanic difference where like the base move is the same, but the, there's like variations with what, um, what things it does to you. So like maybe last time it was just like a rumble, but maybe this time it's a rumble plus a kickback. Actually... You know, like not to fully interrupt, but just because you're, yeah. you're on a really good roll there and what uh, Theater Elf and Wheel were saying kind of fits in there. Like not all events would be for max levels. What if your idea with, with going reverse, like you start off easy, quite literally like level 10 easy with let's, let's go with the, the kind of worn out example they have of like a dragon coming down from the mountain. You start with like a little dragon. You think, oh, this is going to be so badass and so wicked, but it's actually only like a level 30 dragon. That like level 10s could, in theory, have some part in slaying, but not much. Mm -hmm. But it's a level 30. It's not quite max level, but it's it's something. And then a level 40 comes out next. And then, you know, the max level 50 comes out. And then dungeon 
rated level 50 comes out and then raid rated level 50 and then world ra- world boss level and then just there's no way you're going to beat this unless you're super strategic and are really awesome and burn a lot of potions and and deaths <laughs> <to kill laughs> because it's going to be like super mega hard after that like get like a five tier system or a six tier thing and that's that's what drops like the really and then the node gets destroyed <laughs> and the node explodes <laughs> But yeah, no, I think that would be really cool because that shows like a repeatable um, mechanic or a repeatable uh, boss without it being boring. It doesn't get boring because each time it comes back, oh man, last time was tough. I, I don't even know what it's bringing this time. What mechanics changed? And each time you're not going to be like, oh, I remember the mechanics. It was this, that, and the other. No, no, no. You can remember the base mechanics. But then what's going to happen is when you're actually fighting, you're going to be like, oh, man, uh, you got to like learn. You got to be on your toes. You got to learn really quickly. And OK, well, that does that. Let's not get hit by that again. And I really I really like that idea because it, it again, keeps you on your toes, but keeps an old boss new each time, in my opinion, at least. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I mean, they could even use, uh, say, the same appearance loot for every single iteration of the boss, except for, say, color differences, or if they were to repeat that type of thing with every every major event like that, they could have a similar color pattern or wear pattern even. Like, the mm-hmm. lowest tier is going to be the same exact sort as the highest tier, except it's got, like, it's more beat up, more dinged up, or maybe it's like a... a corroded green color from just sitting around and collect being wasted so it's not as powerful yeah and like the next one it's a little bit more brushed off it's still got you know a couple rust spots it's got some dings in the blade and the next one up is it's just got the dings in the blade it's not quite as rusty but it's really not as as polished looking and then you know the top level is super shiny and brand new looking awesome and epic and then the super legendary has an, uh, an aura that you can turn on or off right that would be cool. Um, also, Dem- Democles <laughs> said that um, consistent spawning would lead to more consistent economy, going back to the whole raid bosses in relation to economy. Um, and I, I agree with that because um, basically, as he also states, when you have something that's more rare, the prices are going to go up. And the chance of getting that again is is very uncommon. Um, very m- may happen again. Very rarely, it may not ever happen again. Um, but I think it would also be cool if maybe it wasn't a one and done situation. Um, but maybe if it was like a very rare, like once every three months kind of rare. And yeah that would be kind of cool because then you have many seasons and if they said what one week is a season so let's say you go every three months that's essentially three years in game time yeah and that's uh there's there's an idea i'm gonna end up pitching to them whenever uh being in uh pi the one the one benefit they listed on kickstarter was that we get to help them design an event Mm mm-hmm and I think I've said it before that uh, I thought I thought it was an actual like an event like a raid event or something. So I started I started designing a, a couple raid battles, and and one of them is very season dependent. I'm gonna try and pitch an idea to him anyway. Be like, you know, I know I was supposed to design like a Christmas type event thing, but here's this if you want to look at it. <laughs> the way I have it, it's it's ideally it'll take somebody at least probably six months to even figure out what the hell's going on with it because it, it'll be a little bit of a puzzle in itself. That'll be kind of cool, though. I like puzzles. Once it's all decoded and everybody has, like, the solution, it's still going to take you at least a month to finish because it's got to go through all the seasons if you collect everything needed in every one of the seasons. Like, a.k.a. don't take a vacation for a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I agree. Right? I agree with theater, though, um, that season should be slightly longer like maybe bring it to two weeks not just one week um just to extend it a little bit because one week is is very fast and in the case of something happening where you just can't 
get to the game for whatever reason for that week, you've already missed out for that month on that um, specific um, season. Plus, I'm interested in seeing how that works with the um, some of the months that have five weeks and not four. Or five weekends, I guess, and not four. Yeah, yeah. I think it... To be honest, like the the full change of seasons would have still been nifty if it were even just based on a month. Like, <laughs> Wayla says Santa's reindeer burst out of the mountain and cause mayhem on the farmlands. Gather your party and go boop Rudolph's nose. <laughs> do it, do it. I, I'll be honest. Like I first, you know how when you start reading a sentence and you see like further parts of the sentence as you're reading. I really thought it was going to say something about scooping up Rudolph's poop. <laughs> I, I seriously read, my mind read it as that on the final sentence, and I was really about to about to tell Wayolo he can just not give me that quest. Because <laughs> it would just bring back painful memories of when, when I did have a dog and I had to follow it around with a little baggie and a scooper. Yep, that's World of Warcraft. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> but oh. yeah, speaking of, um, just to kind of tally it away a little bit from Ashes completely, um, being that I am playing more Final Fantasy, um, I do notice a lot of people that are coming from World of Warcraft to Final Fantasy, so that gives me hope that a lot of people aren't gonna just be like, World of Warcraft, and that's it, so people will be like, oh, Ashes of Creation, when it, you know, actually comes out and we can actually see it, but who knows, maybe in a couple of years, um, when it, the game's fully booming and going, and people are hearing more good things about it and seeing actual people streaming it and content stuff coming out on it, I think maybe people would be more interested in joining then, um, especially if you're not like the few of us who have been here since, well, the beginning in 2017, who are kind of into the entire Ashes of Creation franchise and are, are being patient with the development system. Um, if, I think if you're joining currently, it might be, it's not as much stake in the game as, as again, those of us who were in 2017 or 2018 starting. Um, but I think, I think the director's letter is probably going to have some really good info on it. I can't wait to see what they have to say about dates. Um, I don't care about all the dates. I care about important dates that are in the next couple of months. That's what I think. Um, the WoW players in ESO are kind of toxic. Oh no. Uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Definitely fingers crossed. Um, I do see threads surfacing often, um, about DPS meters in, um, Ashes and the very mixed response that it gets. Uh, I personally like it because not to be on the competitive side as far as like, dude, you're at the lowest end of the DPS. You can't be in our group raid, etc. Um, as much as it's, hey, like in a guild format or in a group format, it's like, how am I doing or how is our guild doing? Is one of our guys at the un- at the bottom? Why? Because he and this other guy have the same kind of primary secondary and similar gear so why is he at the bottom and that guy's like towards the middle slash top and it's i think it's interesting that way just to be able to have better feedback on how you're doing in raids and stuff and and especially because i mean nexus was one of many hardcore guilds right so i think it's important for us and the more harder core guilds to be like min max you know how can i get better what how do i know i'm getting better how do i know the damage that I'm doing versus the damage that the person next to me is doing. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Like, I want at a dead minimum, I really, really, really want there to be a meter for myself. I at least want to be able to go up to a training dummy or a boss or, or something, and I, I need to be able to see how I'm doing because how else am I going to actually know which skill that I just got at this level is going to do better for me and my situation. How else am I going to know that besides a meter that's actually telling me exactly what I'm doing? Because if if you don't have one, you're going purely by anecdotal, whatever you can notice by by looking at, at the, the screen when things happen and like going back and rewinding videos and counting pixels in the health bars and how much it moves and such like that. But that's a complete and utter pain in the neck. Mm-hmm. Um, 
But I mean, that being said, if there's going to be a raid leader that's toxic enough that like starts rah 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 about DPS meters down to like the nth percentile, then they're going to be the ones who are going to be anal enough that are going to make somebody sit there in front of uh, us the same mob and uh, kill it as quickly as you can, and they're going to be counting pixels for health bars. Yeah. It, the the avoid DPS meters because it avoids toxicity is not going to be a thing. It's not a real thing. <laughs> it's really not. If someone's going to be toxic, they're going to be toxic. It's just how much effort they're going to put into it. Yeah. Now, if you just give me my own personal DPS meter, yeah, they're going to ask you to take a video of it or whatever. But you know what? At least I'm going to know how good I can do. And if somebody doesn't want to show the world how well they're doing, they don't have to. They can accept the, all right, well, then I'm walking away if you want to see it. And they can deal with it. Yeah. Um, I also agree with what Wayla is saying. Um, he said that would only work for me if they implemented what ESO did. Players can anonymize the source of their damage. So the player can turn on uh, the DPS meter stats or turn it off. Um, basically, every he said every game I have played which has DPS meters focus on that instead of playing the game. Yeah, and see, stuff like that I'm perfectly okay with. Like... By all means, just give me a way of measuring my own stuff is all I ask for. Because again, no matter what, you're, if someone's going to be toxic with stuff like that, they're going to be toxic. And you know what they're going to do? If somebody refuses to take a video of how quickly they can beat a certain monster of adequate level, like every other person going into the raid can do, they're not going to take you to the raid. The same thing they would do if they just had a DPS meter right at their fingertips. So I mean, look what happened when they first introduced gear score to World of Warcraft. Hey, what's your gear score? You're too low. Get out. Um, and that's another form of seeing. I mean, that one is fair because certain certain mobs and bosses need a, a minimum gear score um, in order for you to survive. <laughs> but still, it's just if it's not one thing, it's another. Like um, even looking at your gear and being like, you don't have any legendaries. Sorry, you can't be in our guild or, or like our group or whatever. Um, I feel like if it's always going to be something that they're using to base off of. Um, but DPS meters to me really help me see if Damien and I are doing damage uh, side by side, and it's supposed to be equal. And if I'm doing lower damage, I want to see what I can do and 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 that would make me want to invest more time in my character and, and look at okay what does this skill do what does that skill do how much mana or magic does this take um how much magic does that take and just kind of compare things and and literally try to optimize my mana also with my damage and yeah. um i think that that's a good thing but I think it's also a uh, flavor thing for people who are more hardcore or um, min-max uh, opted. Yeah, I mean, my whole take on it is that the, every, every toolkit has its own selection of tools, right? Now, why would you choose to keep a tool out of it just because somebody else can misuse it? Just because somebody else uses a hammer to take their mirror off their car doesn't mean that you need to use a hammer to do that. You can use the proper tools the way they're supposed to be used. But the, the problem is, again, some people are always going to be toxic, no matter no matter what you do or how you do. All you need to do is just avoid them. Yeah. Like, and it's very possible. I mean, I I was a progression raider in in WoW when like Cataclysm and stuff came out. Me too. I went through, and instead of actually being on the bleeding edge of stuff I stepped back and I was leading raids for a group that couldn't hardly clear the second boss in a raid when the the group I was running with beforehand was on the final boss I could have totally beat that beat that entire raid but instead I chose to take a step back and I was leading a raid with some people I was having a blast with because that's what I wanted to do I wanted to have fun we were wiping 79 times a night <laughs> But we had a, we had fun with it, and it was it was entertaining. It was what it was supposed to be. It was friends going on and doing stupid stuff, and being called out for doing stupid stuff, and paying everybody else's repair bills because you did stupid stuff, and just having fun with it. Like kind of like like theater, like theater elf was saying. I liked it better when people just played with people. 
but some people just playing with people, their their goal is to be on the bleeding edge of raiding. So they need those tools to do it. I'm one of those people. I prefer to be on the edge because maybe not the most leading edge, but the most that I can be. Um, and Wayolo, um, before I realized that DPS meters existed, I literally just mashed buttons until the thing died. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, this is skill ready, that skill's ready. I'm just gonna click buttons until it dies. Like I, I really didn't have a, a, a yeah, see pro. I was super pro, <laughs> um, but. I didn't really have thought behind what, um, yeah, but I have just as much fun, like, when I'm able to kill the thing quickly. Like, I feel like I'm contributing to my group, and I think maybe this is where a difference of, um, view on where we want to do for gaming, um, comes in. Because I like to be on, like, as close to the leading edge as I can, because I have fun with that too. If I know that I'm doing more damage, I feel like I'm contributing to the group more instead of being on the lower spectrum of the damage and being like, how can I, how can I improve? But that's, that's just me. I'm always wanting to know how I can improve. How can I make it better? I'm like that with healing. How can I heal more people without taking so much mana? Um, it just, that's just who I am as a person. I like to min max. Um, but I also, like, tra training dummies is nice to a, a point, but I want to know what do I have that somebody else doesn't have? What stats are they put, pouring into that I'm not pouring into? Um, and it's just, there's a lot of m little things that go into it. And it's not because there's toxicity there for me. It's because it's literally like a curiosity. I just, I, curi I in general, want to know how I'm doing with somebody else. And, yeah, but... I have to dive in at the pointy end. <laughs> but yeah, we well, the uh, the red circles thing. I think you're totally ignoring the uh, the fire buff effect. It's been mathematically proven that standing in the fire does <laughs> increase your crit percentage. Um, so yeah, there's that. Yeah, you but, you uh, you take that crit percentage offset for life percentage. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I've I've totally used that same that same statement there though. That dead DPS is no DPS. Like we'd I'd re we'd rather you avoid getting chopped down by a cleave then get that extra 10,000 damage in one shot that you could have gotten 500,000 in the next five minutes of the fight yeah but i've i've actually purposely as a as a raid leader told someone to stand in the fire to stay there nope don't 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 move if you move out of it nobody's going to heal you just stand there and then watch them just die <laughs> like there you go you didn't want to get out now you had to stand there Kind of sucks, doesn't it? Be nice to your healers, because you just drained all of their mana so they couldn't heal anybody else. And they get the, they get the idea after that. But no, I um I like to bounce around, to be honest. Like I like being on the bleeding edge. I like being on the the progressivist end to where you go into a fight and you literally tell everybody tonight's goal is to figure out what the skills are. That's our goal. We're not trying to win. We're gonna wipe seventeen thousand times. Somebody when that skill cast and you get the debuff, put your mouse over it and screenshot that shit. Save it. As soon as somebody gets that, somebody else get the other debuff. Somebody else like, do this, do that. Look at what the buff, the buff is on the boss. Take a screenshot of that. All right, somebody stand in the bad. Tell me what it does. Somebody else stand in the other bad. Tell me what it does. Okay, try to tank swap. Try uh, using a single tank the entire time. Okay, what does it do? Can you, ta can you actually taunt the boss? Is it tauntable? And that's all we do. We don't try to beat it. We just try to figure out every single little mechanic. And we know that we're going to wipe for the next week doing nothing but that. But then I like to take those lessons and I like to, I like to slum it with the casuals. I will take my shoes off. I will grab a beer. I will hang out with people that don't know anything about the raid. And I'll say, hey, let's go have some fun. And we just go in just to cruise in and do whatever we can do on a casual night of just doing things. Yeah. So. But, I mean, like I was, what I was getting at is uh, just respectful difference of opinion, you know. I can see your guys' point, but I'm also hoping you guys can see my point. I'm not trying to change opinions, I'm just trying to present a different point of view um, as to why I don't believe that they should be considered toxic all the time. Um, 
But when people make it toxic, that I think that's when it ends up feeling not so exciting. Because I have definitely been in those raids before where um, that's all they care about. Um, but also I've been in raids where they didn't really care, but it was also just, it was kind of fun. It was kind of fun to see how I was doing against other people and things like that. But yeah, definitely I think the, the perfect compromise is making it to uh, to toggleable. Toggleable. <laughs> but, um, I'd be 100% for that as well. 100%. Yes. I think I think the option should be there. I don't think it should be there 100% or not there 100%. Clicky wiki options. <laughs> um, but speaking of all this, uh, Vertec also found a raid preparation thread where they're talking about um, for those who do progression raiding, a lot of time is spent outside of the raid, um, preparing gear, resources, your um, enchantments, your magical potions of of wonderfulness. Um, and it's all like, it, it's very common for, yeah, crafting the food, making sure that there's the noms, you know. Getting the potions, getting the feasts, getting the like repair kits. If it's one of those games where you got to repair armor and such after every time you die. And all that fun stuff. I, I enjoy that part too, because I feel like as far as guild wise, that helps with if if you're not good at raiding at least you can contribute to the guild by crafting things that the guild's gonna need for the raid so mm -hmm. if you are not a pve -er, but you are a econ econ <laughs> economy <laughs> person economist <laughs> um then at least you're able to put in your own dues and um i feel like some of my favorite guilds that I was a part of were even though I wasn't physically able to be a part of the raid because my gear level wasn't to uh, spec, my crafting was at max and I was able to give potions and such. And so I was awarded gear pieces or tokens for that um, so that when I did go into the next raid, I got first pick of whatever. And I thought that that was really cool because... Um, it could be turn that token in and we will carry you and try to get you some better gear so that you can actually survive this stuff yourself. Or we will do progression rating with you until you can get up to the rest of our level. Something like that. I thought that that was really cool. But sidetracking from the uh, <laughs> wondering mists question was how much time do you think players should need to uh do raid prep um ideally how long should it take to gather everything you need for a single raid um i think that is a very mixed answer when it comes to doing cooking and uh potion crafting and armor making like when it comes to the crafting side i think oh my gosh it takes a long time but that's because you have to get up to the max level first and you have to be able to get up there with the most amount of stuff that will be helpful for the the guild of the group to go raiding in. But as far as out, uh, the armor that you're wearing, I'm not sure. What do you guys think? That's so here's my here's my take on it. Like it's gonna vary by game, depending on what you get for buffs, how long they last, if they wear off when you die, if they don't wear off when you die, uh, if they only feed one person or if they feed an entire group. Etc. Etc. How many different things you can get to buff yourself? Uh, how many? How often you can use potions and all that? But I think a decent, as far as time input goes, is by man hour. Half the time that you would spend raiding should be spent in gathering and crafting supplies. So ten man raid, right? Ten person raid, and you're going to raid for two hours. That's what twenty hours worth of time. It should take at least ten hours to gather all your supplies. Hmm. Okay. And, and do all the crafting and everything. So if it's a 20 person raid for two hours, it should probably take you about 20 hours to gather and prepare everything to get 20 people ready to be fully buffed up and ready to raid. Again, looking at progression. Yeah, right. exactly. Like Mac, perfect timing, Mackie. <laughs> Depends on the difficulty of the raid. So looking at progression, like the, the end bleeding edge of progression, it, it should be about half the man hours that you're raiding for. Mm-hmm, I agree. I mean, uh. Damocles. <laughs> Sorry, I laugh every time because I have the urge to call him Damocles, and that's why Vertek is teasing me. Um, but he says, uh, 
two days if you do everything on your own. Um, he continues to say, in my opinion, if you go for two raid days per week, one day would be to gather mats and another day to craft everything and gather other consumables. Um, I don't know. Yeah, like Wayla said, that's a really hard question. Um, it depends on your skills that you're already at. There's also resources to make things, you know, and um, if it's Final Fantasy related, like with Final Fantasy 14, there's only so much you can do in a day on, on a character. Um, there's the lightning crystals or wind crystals or whatever crystals that's used as um, some sort of like mana, if you will, to uh, draw resources into creating the magical item. And then there's also like your own like crafting or CP in uh, Final Fantasy or GP for gathering. Um, those are all things that like it really depends on how the whole crafting system is, is made. And are some of the items locked behind a time frame? I know when I was in World of Warcraft, there were some things you can only make once per week. And some of the more important things needed at least five of those. So that's five weeks in order to make one thing. So yeah. it's really crazy. Yeah, I mean, it depends on a lot of stuff like that. But also uh, it depends on how efficient you're being with it. If you're getting one person who kind of specializes in gathering, but they also have some other side characters that kind of do this, that, and the other, yeah, it's going to take longer. If you get people who have specialized specifically in those things, they're going to have items or buffs of some sort that are going to help create more items from whatever they're crafting or create them at better quality or, or what have you. Mm -hmm. and like as an example, doing um, WoW raiding as a 10, a 10 person raid, we would go through when we were doing progression stuff, we would spend like a weekend or a couple days in a row, basically two eight hour days in a row where there'd be a handful of us that would just go out and we would be in voice chat and we'd be listening to music and talking and just gathering and crafting. And that's all we would do for 16 hours is gather, craft, get ready for rating. And for the next month, month and a half, depending on how lucky we were, we had all of our rating supplies stocked up to the full. Mm -hmm. Based on a handful of us doing crafting, gathering, crafting for two days. And me, since I'm not really a crafting person, I did a lot of the gathering. I just sat there fishing. <laughs> <laughs> didn't like it at all. I didn't like it much because I'm not really a fishing type person, but you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I did that and also leather. Leather working? Yeah. Or are you, oh, okay. I did skinning actually. I collected skinning. a lot of the leather. Yeah. Because we needed them drums, them drums of war. Oh, I remember that. Skinning was always easy and so was, uh, the weaver because a lot of the cloth dropped from enemies yeah well i uh i played a bear and so we got we got bonuses <laughs> in skinning and we had the uh Druid. i know one time there was a uh there was a knife i think it, i want to say that was in the most not the most recent expansion but when <laughs> you and i were playing there was the knife that would skin everything in like a giant radius yeah i wish that was there for the whole time you just click on one thing yeah <laughs> But yeah, we all ooh, 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 side question. As a tank, what do you think about a rule that uh, tanks should get potions for free? What? No. Whoever said that? No, 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 no. Clearly the clerics get the potion <laughs> for free. Okay. Oh, no. See, but the thing is, if, if you're going on personal paychecks to um, repair your gear, tanks have hands down probably four times the repair bill that anybody else in the raid has. Okay, but I'm keeping you alive, so as long as you don't die, your 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 armor damage shouldn't need to go down. And as long as I have mana, I can keep you alive, therefore I need potions more. Every time you get hit, your armor gets damaged. <laughs> Every time you get hit, your armor gets damaged. Whale Everybody says, else only gets damaged ooh, when they die. Whale says tanks could have cheaper repair costs. That'd be dandy. That'd be dandy. <laughs> Um, but I don't want to pass up what Makinoji says. Uh, getting ganged while gathering was my life for, for years in Terra. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be my life in Ashes, too, with the open world PvP situation. Tanks better be good at making money and no way to, uh, no way potions for free. Thank you, Z. But potions you making are me go sell my services on the corner. <laughs> Jeez. I'm already paying you for, like, Helping me not die while I'm trying to gather these dang herbs to make my own potions, okay? <laughs> yeah, 
But yeah, I, I definitely do healer gatherer. Um, yeah. Buy potions, <laughs> pay for buffs from the entertainers of bards in town. Is he? Green ganked 45 times. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> it's a rough life. Well then, well then, I I vote for any any um anybody I'm raiding with to turn on their uh, their free repairs, the guild repairs, <laughs> because tanks have expensive ass repair bills, and it easily pays for like buff potions. But are you a tank tank or are you a off tank tank? I'm a. I get kicked in the teeth, and if the boss is any bigger than I am, I'm staring at its junk for four hours. And what? that's my glorious view, is staring at the boss's junk in my face as he swings my, a hammer at my head. This got real, real fast. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to realize, like, DPS, or uh, not DPS, but heals are not going to be back end anymore. We're not, just, we're not just standing off in the back anymore. We're up there up front with you now. Yeah. I mean, we'll see how Ashes pans out. We'll see how Ashes pans out. But tanks are usually catching every single time the tank, uh, the the boss swings, the tank takes a hit. It's like, I've had times where at the end of a night, I've paid four or 5,000 gold for repairs and everyone else is like, eh, 800. <laughs> yeah. And oh yeah, one of the, one of the hour that it doesn't go away when you die, um, elixirs is like 150 gold. So they wasted like three of those worth of money and I wasted like uh, 20 of them worth of money yeah I did have another point of view though for you as far as this raid preparation goes what if there was a warning ahead before um, a, a random world boss spawned how much time do you think should be given ahead of time should it be like random completely random or should there be like a random person that comes running into the town going, I saw a dragon in the distance. It looked like it was coming this way. Like, what do you guys think? Yeah, see, I think when it comes to those types of events, like we're talking about like the world boss, giant spawn things, I, I would think there should be a minimum of a 12 hour notice. Like that's kind of at a minimum. Yeah, but like, Okay, yeah, so like, at least, I prefer surprise, okay. Because that, that changes the whole thing. How well prepared are you? Are you stocked constantly in the case that anything could happen at any time? Or are you stocking on a per basis situation where you are planning to go do a raid so therefore you are stocking rather than, oh, anything could happen at any time? Because this world is living so this is the first living world that i've ever actually played in outside of like fates randomly popping up but that's not really living that's just i feel like a timed event once one fate goes away another one pops up somewhere else in the world but um this this world is actually living and reacting to us so i think the ideas behind it and the way that you actually go about preparing for that should have a different mentality yeah me i see i think that there should be a warning not necessarily because i want to prepare for it but if i'm not online because face it statistically speaking unless you get paid to stream and your job is literally to play the game you are going to be not on the game more time than you are on the game by right. far by far by far so you stand a much greater chance of missing that really cool event than you stand of actually catching that really cool event if there's no warning if there's even only an hour warning you stand a much greater chance of completely missing it altogether whereas if you have at least a 12 hour warning you have time to say okay well i was going to be shopping and doing this and that and the other at the time well i could shift shopping to earlier in the day and i could make it totally for the starting of that event and then after that i could do the cleaning house or whatever your errands like i don't i don't even know like if you work from home you could totally take your lunch break at that time <laughs> like yeah. who knows what the thing is but yeah there, there there should be some way that you can pick out that something is going to happen and it should be announced in a way that at least if it is your metropolis is being attacked that you can be ready for it right and you can like drop something i don't know tell your boss you're gonna be late to work sorry <laughs> <my boy. laughs> okay, don't do that. 
Uh, there's a place. lot of tra traffic. I, I'll be in yeah. about an hour late. Um, <laughs> I definitely got a flat tire. <laughs> but Wayello makes a pretty good point. Um, he says, remember, some of the nodes will be able to pre-detect some of these events. Um, Rand events where you stop and go, ooh, something cool over there um, is really fun as well. But a zone warning is very good. It gets the players in the er area to come together at a single location. Short warning, kind of like what Rift did. Um, and Theater thinks that um, they prefer a surprise. Random event, uh, sorry, not random events. Many times you get no warning of disasters, so like the earthquake that happened in SoCal. There's no, hey, I'm going to have an earthquake in like 10 minutes, just so y'all know. No, it just, it happens. And you have to react. Um, but, um... Theater also says that they think that there should be a variety. There should be some surprises and some signals as well. I think that's a really good thought, you know. Um, should, shouldn't be one massive event. There should be uh, also smaller... Yeah, one's happening like hourly or constantly. Maybe every day, random times during the day. So everybody gets a chance to be a part of a random thing. I think yeah, that would be I mean, cool. When it, comes to, when it comes to stuff like that, I... I'm not necessarily of the everybody should always have a chance to do everything. Like it shouldn't be there for long enough that everybody in the entire server should be able to do it. Like I'm 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 definitely there for limited events and if you were there you were there cool as long as there's a lot of them. If there's only one every like 6 months, that would be kind of a kind yeah. of a jerk move to make yeah. it so that only certain people can get it. But if there's the chance that anybody could get one at any time, I think it would be pretty cool to make them limited so people can actually compare and contrast, especially between different servers of who got what and where it was and yeah. really like dig into the, the, the unique stories and people that got unique achievements and unique things. Yeah. But at the same, yeah, yeah, the events would not be at the same magnitude for sure. Like they wouldn't be able to make like throwaway events, like so many of them, but at the same time, they could do minor alterations because in the in the end a dragon or a grizzly bear could have the same exact attacks except for fire breathing <laughs> and like flying i've never seen a bear fly well dragons don't always fly either that's fair so a dragon and a, a grizzly bear could have the exact same attacks the only but he has a stubbly little tail how is he gonna want me with a tail with like a tiny little beep? If you're in a really <laughs> awesome circus, I guess the bears could also be fire <laughs> But uh But uh, other than that, I mean, the skin's going to be different and the amount of space that its feet take up are going to be different. So yeah. you could literally reskin the exact same account encounter in something else, plop it somewhere else with a different backstory, and you're done. Yeah. And it will, it will look different and it will feel different, even though it's maybe the same thing. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by, Mackie. We really appreciate you stopping by. I haven't seen yeah. you in a little bit, so. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm sorry that we've gone down on the number of things that we're covering, but it's only until we get more info constantly coming in. Yeah, once the info starts coming in, we'll go back to being weekly. But I was having a funny idea. Um, I remember watching some of the uh, Alpha Zero stuff, and there is these cute little, like, bunny things i don't remember what they were called um <laughs> but i was imagining what if you're like one of your quests was to go out there and like kill a few of them because like some of them stole paper or whatever from a, a spell book that is oh so important so we have to go collect these papers or bits of whatever and then maybe like the leader of the pack sees that like we're killing their like their herd leader their pack le uh, pack members and they're like deciding forget this this random enemy is attacking my my pack and i'm gonna go take revenge on them and then there's like a bunch of like little like creepy bunny things coming in towards the uh the town as like a huge like her like almost like a herd of them the whole pack of them just like invading towards the town because that's where the evil person who killed uh, so many of their pack members came from they're called rabbits. Rabbits are evil. <laughs> okay, so Vertex has a long history with disliking rabbits. It's complicated. He thinks rabbits are evil forever now. <laughs> but I get along really well with all types of creatures except for rodents. Any type of rodents, they don't like me. And I had, I, I when I was a little kid, I had a, 
I had a pet bunny. I had a pet bunny, right? I also had a pet duckling. Like, still had the fuzz, not even the, the feathers yet. It was still just fuzz, the yellow fuzz. The bunny was playing with the ducky on Easter, no less. We thought it'd be cute, right? And starts chasing the little ducky around and then decides to jump down on its wing and hop around the yard. This, this, this bunny decided to eat the duck and run around the yard, hopping all around with it in its mouth. Ducky's just sitting there hanging out. It's a little feathered wing going, wee, 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 wee. So yeah, rabbits are evil. Rabbits are evil, evil, evil little buggers. I don't like them. <laughs> Every rodent has bit me. I, I would be more afraid of a hamster biting me than uh, I've picked up six foot long red tail boas. <laughs> oh, <Aussie>. see. <laughs> I'll let them hang out, hang out on my shoulders just fine. But you give me a hamster or a gerbil and I look at it and go, no, I ain't touching it. It's going to eat me. Because <laughs> they always bite me. All of them. <laughs> You're welcome, Z. My pleasure. My pleasure. Boy. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah the event stuff is going to be... Uh, interesting timing and uh, interesting uh, balance with everything I agree. definitely want to make sure they're impactful definitely want to make sure that especially the ones that give out legendary gear are going to feel legendary and you're not going to give out that same gear to everybody and you want a lot of people to have a chance to do it but I think leaving it up for days and days and days if it's a special um, instigated event like something happened to make it occur rather than it's just always there then it, it shouldn't really be up for a long period of time. I personally don't think. Yeah. But I think one of the good balances might be what we were talking about earlier, where you start off with a low level one that comes out and it's like, me here. Oh, never mind. Oh, I'm sorry. And it runs away and comes back again, like, oh, I'm even more raw. Oh, shit. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Comes back again a couple hours later, going, I'm even more raw. Oh, shit. Damn it. Guys, stop. <laughs> And then comes back with the super ultra mega version that drops like the super shiny awesome loot. <laughs> and then after that, maybe it goes away or it comes back once more with like. At the level one, start with the lizard. Yeah. <laughs> Little lizard comes climbing up the climbing up the gate of your town. Gazira rare, rare. Oh jeez. Um. <laughs> I'm not trying to cut us short, but we have been on for about an hour now, and we haven't even shown uh, this week's fan art. Oh my. Oh my. This we should do that. Yes. So here it is. Um, I forget who it's by. Did you make note of that? That is by Gulo and a long number. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Gulo. Um, we found this on the Ashes of Creation Twitter. Ah, perfect timing. Um... <laughs> And it's interesting. I think that's a cleric because of the bell and the way that the tabard looks. And that definitely the wings. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. It's supposed oh. to be a cleric. You got nice. it. Nice. Ding, 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 ding. We Yay. have a winner. I can do charades. Oh, wait. That's not really charades. Um, <laughs> charades. Some kind of pally twink. <laughs> <laughs> but. Oh, reminding me of Guild Wars now. <laughs> But yeah, um, as of right now, uh, I'm not really looking to do any personal streams. I'm still trying to get my whole day just evened out. So I have an actual set schedule that I'm working with here because I go on, I go to college online now and um, the PHP thing I'm working on is from home. So I don't have to be anywhere at any specific time. So creating a rigid uh, schedule for myself that also allows time for playing video games is an important aspect for my day. Um, I may definitely look to create more time once more Ashes of Creation stuff begins to come out, such as um, maybe an hour or two a week on doing Apocalypse stuff, maybe with mucho hair. <laughs> um, I thought it was a cloak at first. I did. And then I look closer and I'm like, there's no nothing tying a cloak on. It's literally just all hair. <laughs> hair cloak. Hair cloak. <laughs> uh, benefit of... Question mark? <laughs> uh, it can't be an Ashes character, though. There are all the... Where are all the pouches and vials, right? 
And maybe he lost them. Maybe he just he just bought somebody, and that's why he is like holding his stuff. Like I'm gonna find you. You just stole all of my stuff. How dare that's you? She. Oh, she. Sorry. I they. mean, I'm not assuming gender, but they. there's definitely much much armored chest in there. They. Sorry. Yeah. We'll, we'll just go with they. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Sold them to the tank. The tank tank confiscated the <laughs> uh, the potions. Yeah. But, um, yeah, basically I'm looking to maybe do more when Ash's stuff actually starts to come out. Um, I may do an occasional Final Fantasy thing. I'm not really sure. I know that that's super overpopulated, but again, I think Vertec and I are looking into other platforms like Mixer and DLive, etc. So, um, just be prepared if in the future we choose to go with a different platform than Twitch. Um, but we are working on a lot of behind the scenes projects that will allow us to be able to one, not only bring you more content, but two, also allow us to, um, provide a little bit better content as well as better rewards for those of you who choose to grace us with your loving subs or, um, eventually when we finally get the, uh, you know, PayPal up, uh, the awesome tips that you guys want to give us at all so everything is sorry go ahead many things keeping us up at night many projects to work forward yes yes and uh all the stuff that we earn from streaming at all goes back towards better streaming stuff so microphones as you guys see um Mm -hmm. we're using zoom instead of skype now because that seems to be working a lot easier both currently with streaming so that you guys have good high quality video as well as post when he's editing to make sure that both of our audios are separated and if there's any issues with anything he can just import both of them like independently and fix it so yeah makes mucho easier and our official podcast streaming time is vertex Oh, no, I think we're going to hover around the 5 o'clock. That seems to be the best time for a lot of people. Yeah. Unless you folks here in the room right meow say that going an hour or two earlier would be better. We may end up just sticking with the 5 o'clock Pacific, like we did today-ish. Don't yeah. mind the 15, 20 minutes difference. That did not exist. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so, so much. Um right on cue if you guys want to follow us to see us when we go live again um you can follow us on twitter just type exclamation mark twitter bad i know z you didn't get your your private message i'm so sorry i blame her tech um i got you next time (laughs) but um we'll also be trying to put it up in um the various discords whether it's uh the ashes official or um the uh our our guild or just our own the Golden Feather Discord. So, by PST, it's good, I think. Okay, cool. No D&D tonight, so I got to catch the show. Nice. Well, yeah, I'm glad you're able to catch. D&D. Yeah. yeah. D- no D&D is always not fun. Uh, 8 to 9 EST is a good time. Okay, cool. Because the, the other thing is, like, we're trying to make sure it's not too late for our East Coast partners, but also not too early for our EU partners. So, um, just want to make sure everybody has, like, a good time zone that they can watch this. Um, I'm sure a lot of EU is used to Intrepid's PST randomness, so, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you guys so much for joining us, and, uh, this video I promise will be on YouTube soon, TM. Um, I actually need to get the other videos up officially, now that we have fixed something with my, uh, OneDrive where it's actually syncing everything um and yeah if I was thinking maybe if the uh creative director's letter comes out within this next week we may be here on this Friday otherwise see us in two weeks and uh keep an eye on our Twitch or our Twitter account for uh official updates and stuff yeah once again Thank you all for your time. Thanks for stopping by. We love you. And adios. Adios.